Welcome back to the Cantina. This is Stephanie. Please feel free to subscribe. Hit the bell for more content. Hit the like button. Smash that like button. The more likes I get, the more views I get, and everyone's happy. Share away here. We share away here for little Star Wars. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Captain Marvel, Disney, uh, marketing, buying tickets, and uh, empty theaters, plus Mark Hamill and what might be going on. So, be, so get ready. Hey guys, it's Stephanie, your friendly neighborhood uh, barkeep, bar manager, cantina, uh, owner, purveyor of Star Wars news and uh, other news uh, right now. Um, so today I'm gonna kinda show you something I got. Uh, haven't, I've never read this book. It's one of the Legends books I've never read. But Darth Plagueis by uh, James Luceno and everybody who's read it loves it. So. I'm, I can't wait to break into it. Um, I've got about five books I'm reading right now, so kind of hard to keep them all uh, straight. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about maybe, perhaps, why Captain Marvel is doing so well. And it doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with, uh, how good it is. It has a lot to do with Solo and A Wrinkle in Time, though. This is from a friend of mine named Lee Scott. He's a huge, uh, to me, he's a huge deal in Hollywood. He's he's one of my contacts, and he's a good guy. And uh, I've known him, I think, for years now. Uh, we were a little bit apart. I was a little bit part of the Breitbart gang, and he was one of the big, uh, big dogs there. And when Andrew was still alive, and uh, you ever want to read or meet a real liberal, leisure man. All right, not a leftist, a liberal. There's a huge difference between that and that, okay? So anyway, let me read this to you, and I'm gonna ask you guys what you think. And at the end of this video, I'm going to leave a link to a video that I found that actually kind of proves this might be right. Now remember, this is from somebody who knows Hollywood, uh, who's been, working in Hollywood for years, decades. And uh, suffice it to say that if, if you think that the, that the top Disney execs, Alan Horn, uh, Bob Iger himself and others aren't in trouble right now, they are. And this might explain how they're trying to wiggle out of it. So Lee starts out with, people are asking me why Disney would buy tickets to their own movie to inflate the box office. And I'm not saying they are. Just a lot of folks are turning up uh, turning up to sold out screenings to find empty theaters. Of course, it's a left arguing that this is a stupid conspiracy. And after shoving down our throats how important representation is, and this movie in particular is now, they now say, geez, it's just a movie. Anyway, here's the deal. Stock prices are not directly tied to cash flow. They aren't really even tied to assets and liabilities. You're betting on the long-term growth of the company. The share of the marketplace, chances of continued profitability. And Disney isn't directly buying the tickets. They are paying marketing firms and writing that into the marketing budget to inflate the opening weekend numbers. But why do they do this? It makes no sense because success of a movie isn't based on its overall profitability. If it was, they would be making small movies all over the place. It's about market share, bragging rights, and the downstream markets. All of those things have a greater value if the opening weekend is big. It's about toys, restaurant tie-ins, future films, digital downloads, TV rights, etc. So as a factor of marketing, it makes sense to spend $50 million of your $200 million budget simply buying tickets to ensure that the movie is a hit despite rotten reviews, insulting lead actress, and general SJW fatigue. But why didn't they do this with Solo or A Wrinkle in Time? That's the wrong way to think about it. They are doing this because of Solo and A Wrinkle in Time. The people in charge are now on thin ice. Shareholders don't care about their agenda. McDonald's would probably prefer Lesbury Larson. Walmart doesn't want to buy any more of their crap if the films continue to underperform because they are made by commie cronies and star weak in talent with loud mouths and offensive Twitter accounts. 
Simply put, the sub $100 million opening weekend of this film would have been the final straw for a lot of higher ups and would have changed the directive at the largest movie studio in the industry. Instead of smirking and saying, see, America loves feminism and Brie Larson, they would have been saying, damn it, fine, get Lee Scott on the line. All right, we'll go on to that. Now he's just being sarcastic and snarky, which is one of Lee's strong points. So basically what you have, as far as I can tell, and looking at what people have, set, have seen at the theaters, is Disney padding the box office to make it look bigger than it was. You know, you've got, you know, $400 million opening. How much of that did you buy? You see, you think, you think we're getting the truth and we're not. And the reason why, again, and I'm going to reiterate what we, what Lee said, they might be doing this is because of Soylo and A Wrinkle in Time. Because those movies bombed. In fact, Solo, $200 million down the drain. Poof, gone. All right? In the red. Bob Iger could not afford that. Now, are they going to do this with uh, Episode 9? Maybe. But I really think that there's been so much bad blood between Kennedy and Iger that he, he would almost prefer Episode 9 to fail not reach its billion and uh, get the new guy coming in, coming in. Um, I do want to again reiterate that Craig at Reviews For You did say the new person who's running Lucasfilm, who's already there, is making a movie. We don't know who it is yet. I have speculation. I've said it before. I think it might be JJ. It might be somebody else. But there is somebody there and they are running Lucasfilm. And, you know, um, and also this, I want to, uh, DJD, uh, said this on, what was it, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday night that, um, when we were on the podcast that, uh, Pablo Hidalgo isn't going anywhere, that he's somehow has been protected. He's been protected. One of the things the fans who understand what's going on, who've been subject of his condescension and his arrogance need to do is insist he goes okay so what i want you guys to do is if you're on twitter or anywhere if you have screenshots of, of hidalgo being snarky and i don't is from his old account from as far back as you can keep them screenshot them send them to bob Iger, send them to disney okay because hidalgo is one of the parts of Lucasfilm that is the most rotten, him and his wife, okay? So if they go and someone who actually loves Star Wars takes over for him, I mean, good. Because the thing that, the thing that, that about Lucasfilm that is, that is very sad and actually kind of heartbreaking is simply this. I don't believe anybody there, except for maybe the guys at ILM, care anymore. Um, some are too young, like Matt Martin, to care. They don't know what they don't know what it's about. They don't understand. They weren't raised in the same world that we were, and that's too bad. They've been abused because of that. Okay, they've been uh, torn away from what makes it special. Uh, from from the underpinnings, the myth mythological underpinnings, and and the magic of it, uh, and it's too bad. Um, you know, and the other people like Hidalgo and others who just want to use Star Wars to beat the rest of us over the head with their leftist uh, SJW agenda, which really has no business being in those movies. Okay, so you know, we need to do something about it. We need to confront that problem head on. I don't mind doing it. Okay. And, uh, you know, but I do, I still find it weird that, uh, he got something that, that thing that happened last summer. I'm still not sure what it was. The problem with Lucasfilm is that they won't be transparent with us. And 
it hurts them not to be. I really do believe that the fans would be happier if we understood what the F was going on there. Okay? Because all we do is get this, oh, everything's fine, Sparky. No, it's not. We all know it's not fine. It's bullshit. That is bullshit. Okay, here's another thing. Mark uh, Hamill posted a picture of him with Harrison Ford. And he basically posted it saying that this is what a reunion between Han and Luke would look like. Now, Mark John at uh, Backlash is saying that he doesn't really think there's anything to it. And that he think that he, he kind of believes that Hamill's just kind of, you know, jerking our chains. No, he's not. Um, sure, last December, Mark uh, seemingly got on board and was basically playing, being a good team player. But he's not happy. Um, everybody in Hollywood that, that kind of has like a quarter of the story or half the story, uh, you know, are telling me that he's really upset by what happened. He doesn't, I mean, you see him sending tweets, you know, friendly tweets out to Ryan Johnson. The word frenemy comes to mind, okay? The word frenemy. The idea that Mark Hamill would like this guy doesn't make any sense considering that the one character that Mark is really known to play, to be, Luke Skywalker, basically Ryan Johnson dragged him through the mud. In the same way that J.J. Abrams dragged Han Solo and Leia through the mud. Um, and, you know, Mark is, Mark is going to be the one to stand up and say, no, you can't do that. Uh, and if Carrie was still, still around, I would say that Carrie probably would have been on his side on this. And let me tell you something, because she's loyal to her, to, to her friends and she and Mark have been friends for 40 years. Um, and she'd stick up for her brother. Uh, Harrison, too zen, way too, way too cool to rule. I mean, he's not on Twitter. Think about that. Cool people don't go on Twitter. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> it's true though. Um, so, you know, so why is he saying this? You know, I was told that he might not be getting, that the, the part for Luke is, is only going to be a cameo. Um, that's the rumor. Uh, I was told that it was cut back. It might be cut back. You know, to me, because we don't know yet, again, they're not telling us what they're doing. You know, he could be complaining about the whole trilogy, about the whole sequel trilogy. Um, Mark John doesn't have the whole story. I'm going to leave you with this. Around the time that he started, started changing his tune in December, or I think maybe after, no, I think it was around December, he had a, a phone call from Kathy Kennedy screaming, at him like a dried up Harridan. And, uh, you know, he got, pretended to be on board. I do know that, that, that he and somebody else, and I don't know who it was, um, the name, I, I, I have two names. I, I told Mark John one name. I didn't say what it was, but I had one name in mind, but there might have been two. Went to the board, the Disney board of directors and the shareholders and basically told them, you know, about what they felt about her and about what was going on at Lucasfilm. Now, I am going to give you one name that might have been involved. J.J. Abrams, who has never liked Kathleen Kennedy. All right. Now, he can sit there and, and be smart and be like, no, she's kidding. Right. No. She was not allowed anywhere near the creation of Episode 7. Her story group was not allowed near Episode 7. In fact, Carrie Hart and J.J. Clashed, clashed so, so hard on the set of Episode 7 that J.J. wouldn't allow her on the set, okay? So there you go on that one, and that is a fact. Um, she is probably one of the reasons why, he is probably one of the reasons why she no longer is at Lucasfilm. Uh, one of the reasons why she was let go. Um, so, you know, it might J.J. might have been one of those people. But there's somebody else, I'm sure, maybe two other people besides Mark and maybe JJ who went in and said, we got to fix this problem. This is, and the, it just snowballed into the phone call at the end of May with uh, uh, 
the two sides at Lucasfilm and Bob Iger screaming at each other. And again, uh, you know, we saw uh, how Hidalgo deleted that one Twitter account, came back and whined about it. I've got the screenshots. You know, why? Why? So anyway, this is Steph. I didn't want to be on this long, but I, I wanted to give you guys uh, a little bit about what might be going on uh, at Disney Lucasfilm. And uh, I'll see you guys around the galaxy. I'll see you guys around the cantina. Remember, please tip those Wookiee bartenders 20% and don't piss off the Wookiee bouncers because once they start up, I can't stop them. They get out of control. So anyway, I'll see you around, I'll see you around the galaxy. I'll see you around the cantina. Hey guys, it's Stephanie. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you like. Hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell for more content. When I upload, you'll know I, I uploaded something. And uh, feel free to share. We share away here for the like. If you love Star Wars. Oh, and hit that like button. Hit the like button hard. And make sure you do that. So I'll see you around the galaxy. I'll see you around the cantina. This is Steph. Oh. Thank you.